Well, that's not moving very far. What's up with that? Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're gonna have a look at why control surfaces don't appear to move far when you first set up a model. Now, this was something that came up in the iNav fixed wing group over the last week or so. And this video is just to clarify what's going on really. This is especially the case if you set up a brand new model and especially if you're new to iNav and don't really know what's going on. So first of all, the golden rule of iNav is whenever you test your control surface throws, always do it in manual mode. Currently I'm in acro mode. So what I'll do is I'll head over to the desk and we can get a better look at what's going on. Okay, so here we have our control surface and all I'm gonna do is move the pitch and you can see it's not moving far at all. Maybe, um, you know, three or four millimeters up and about three millimeters down. So as I said, I'm in acro mode at the moment and this is what you might be experiencing. But if I flick it into manual mode, we can now see the full range of the control surface. You can see I've got at least double, if not yeah, more throw that I had in uh, acro mode. And the reason for this is it's not been flown and not been auto-tuned yet. This is currently set up as far as the PID controller is concerned as if it's a brand new model. So as I mentioned, when you're checking and measuring your throws, always do it in manual. So for this plane, that is actually plenty. That is about sort of 10 millimeters of throw. And for, for this little mini AR wing, that is absolutely plenty. So it's actually very simple. The reason why it happens is because we're not actually controlling the servos. In manual mode we are, but in anything else, we're not directly controlling the servos. So first I'm gonna explain what happens in manual. So I'll switch into manual. And basically our servos have got a zero in the middle and then they can go to 100% either side of that. So we have a zero in the middle. If I move all the way over to the right on the roll, that is giving me 100% on the roll axis. It doesn't matter what I'm trying to do because it's manual, it's a direct link. 100% is 100%, yeah. Ignoring Expo, 50% is 50% and the same on pitch. So it's directly controlling, but in the other modes, it is different. So what we're gonna do is pop into iNav and have a look at the PID tuning tab. And first of all, we're gonna go into the rates and expo sub tab, and we're gonna explain what happens in acro mode. So I'm gonna switch over to acro now. And what we can see here at the top are roll and pitch rates. Now, these are the rates that are determined for our airframe. So these are the default values. So it's got 180 degrees per second on roll, and 90 degrees per second on pitch. And these are fairly safe default values. Um, the default values are worked out for a wide range of aircraft. So we could be you know, on a 600 millimeter wing like this, or we could be on a 2.4 meter wingspan ASW28. But yeah, we have to cover a wide spectrum of aircraft. So that's why everything is pretty sedate for quite a few smaller aircraft. If we're in acro mode, what we're actually doing is specifying a rotational rate that we want to achieve. Now, of course, on the bench, it's not gonna show that because it's not in flight. Air mode isn't active. It's not all working as it would be in a regular flight. But to give you an idea of what's happening, we're again gonna ignore expo. We're just gonna go with rough percentages. So for example, if we take our roll rate, in the middle, we'll be do doing zero degrees per second rotation. If we move that all the way to the outside edge, we'll be aiming for 180 degrees per second rotation. And if we go about 50%, we'll be aiming at about 90 degrees per second rotation. And of course the flight controller is measuring what is actually happening and is trying to match those two things up. And again, the same with pitch. Now with angle mode, it's again different. And all the modes other than acro are based on angle mode. So all your navigational stuff is based on angle mode. With angle mode, it is actually using maximum angles. So if we see here, we have a maximum roll angle and a maximum pitch angle. So if we take our maximum pitch angle, if we do fall down on the sticks, we're looking for a 45 degree uh, climb angle. And again, if we go halfway, we're gonna be going for a 22 and a half degree climb angle. So that is how it works in angle mode. And again, because the plane is on the bench, not moving, they're not fully active. 
So that's why they are different to manual mode. And when you set the control surfaces up, you should only ever use manual mode. And I do have a video for how to set your control surfaces up in iNav. So I'll put a link in the top corner and uh, that will take you through that entire process. So unfortunately, this subject can lead to some bad advice when setting up a plane. So if I take you into the mixer now, because this is a, an Elevon setup, which means that there's two controls on a single control surface, we need to mix them at a 50% um, a rate. I saw one post recommending to bump those up to 100, but that will actually just oversaturate the control surface. For, for setting up um, a mixed control surface, so here on the Elevons, we have aileron and elevator, so pitch and roll. What we need to do is balance that out. So in the mixer it's nicely color coded so here servo one is obviously our left elevon servo two is our right elevon and um, we have stabilized roll and stabilized pitch on each elevon now because this is a single surface the weight must total 100 percent so the best place to adjust the control surface movement is actually through the linkage and again that's covered in the control surface setup for inav video which again, I'll, I'll put a link in the description as well. Set them up physically to recommended values. If you don't have recommended values, about 20 degrees is probably a good starting place. You might find that that's actually a bit too much depending on the aircraft and how you're flying it. So you may need to reduce that down, but it's a good starting place. But if you get to a point where you can't physically adjust anymore, then you can change stuff in uh, the INAV outputs tab. Don't do it in the mixer, get those uh, set up correctly and then if you need to adjust you can change this rate so for example I can set it to 120 or you could even reduce it down the other way so I will set the other one to 80 if I save that we can check the movement so in manual I've got less movement here and more movement here um, and if I put these back to 100 we should get our normal movement back So there you can see we've increased our movement on this one we've decreased the movement on this one so you you do have a, a little bit of play here so that would be the better place to set it up if you can't get it done physically is on the outputs but um, ideally set up mechanically the best you can so is this going to be enough for the maiden well in most cases you'll probably be fine but if you did want to change something slightly to give you a bit more of a guarantee I'll show you what to do now. So we'll pop into the PID tuning tab and what we're gonna do is adjust the feed forward. Again, we don't want to adjust the rates because we don't know what our airframe is capable of. Let INAV do that in the auto tune. And when it does the auto tune, it will also match the feed forward to those rates. But what we can do is given the standard rates is adjust the feed forward to get a much better match. Right, so what we're going to be doing in this process is switching between acro mode and manual mode. And what I'll do is I'll show you on the roll first. So all I'm going to do is do a full roll and we're currently in manual mode. And what I'm going to do is just switch into acro mode. And you can see that the control surface just moves down slightly. Now, if you wanted to do this uh, optimally you would measure it but what we're looking for is about 80 percent so for example if in manual mode that is 10 millimeters when you flick it into acro mode you want about eight millimeters and that would be ideal now i i showed the roll first because i knew that was pretty close so there's no problem with that at all but now what i'm going to do is show you on the pitch because i know that this can be improved slightly so if i do a pitch up in manual mode and then switch to acro mode you'll see that i'm getting a little bit less than the 80 percent that i want so to correct this what we're going to do is because it's slightly less we're going to increase our feed forward so i'm going to set this to about 90 and i'm going to do a save once that ESC beeps we can try again so again we'll go into manual mode pitch up and flick to acro that's looking a bit better but I'm going to try a little bit more so I'm going to set this one to 100 
So now flicking between uh, manual and acro, we're, we've got about 80% movement there. So at this point, we've given ourselves a bit more reassurance about the maiden flight. We've basically got the maximum out of the current rates that we want to. We don't really want to go over that 80% because INAV needs a little bit of wiggle room. But this 80% at those rates should be fine to get anything into the air. So the next thing you want to do, once you're happy that everything else is ready for the maiden, is fly the plane. And once you're up in the air, the first thing that you should really do is an auto-tune. So for the auto-tune, if you're new to INAV, for example, you may have come from Arduplane, uh, you don't just bash the stick from side to side. That's not going to do anything. If anything, it will give you a really bad tune. So yeah, none of this. Uh, what we need to do is specific deliberate movements. What we need to do is make sure that we're in the acro flight mode. Don't do it in manual. You'll actually get a warning on screen if you're in manual and don't do it in angle or horizon make sure that you are in acro. And what you're gonna do is set the throttle to about 60%. For most moderate flying, that's gonna be a, a decent throttle amount. If you are hooning this thing all the time at full throttle, then that's how you're gonna, gonna tune it. But for most people, about a 60% throttle, maybe 65 is gonna be plenty. And what we're gonna do is we'll start on one axis. So we'll start maybe on the roll, just give it a full stick input and then recenter it. With the first few inputs you may need to go back full stick input the opposite way and then recenter to level the plane because it will start fairly slowly so we're looking at slow banks at this point but as you you uh, continue with the auto tune these banks will get quicker and quicker as the rotational rate increases and at some point you will get to the point where you feel confident enough that you could do a full roll so at that point do a full roll give it full stick and then once you're back up the right way, let yeah, center the stick and then do it again. If you're doing this on a single motor plane, what you'll find is one way will roll quicker than the other due to the torque of the motor. So you'll probably find this out best in manual mode because you're not restricted by anything, but you'll find that one way will actually spin quicker than the other. I would recommend setting up your PIDs based on the slower direction. So yeah, get in there, do a full roll back to center, full roll back to center, full roll back to center and just keep doing this. And the best way to do it is to have your PID information on your OSD. And what you're looking for is for the rate to stabilize and the feed forward to stabilize. Once these two have stabilized, then that axis is good to go and then move from the roll onto the pitch. And again, the pitch is gonna be the same thing. You're gonna be doing full stick movement, let go. Full stick movement, let go. And again, when you first start with pitch, it will be quite slow, but then it will increase. And depending on the aircraft, you may get to the point where you feel you could do a full roll. Now, if you didn't want to do a full roll, Mark Hoffman gave me an excellent tip, and that is just to roll the plane onto its side and then do full back elevator. So you could do a, a 90 degree bank, then full back elevator and do a complete circle and then let go of the elevator. And that will get the, uh, the pitch movement as well. And actually Mark has got a very good video about uh, doing a quick auto tune, then he goes into a more manual tune setup. So what I'm gonna do is put a link to that because the auto tune section will show you exactly what you need to do in an actual plane. One thing, if you do see 255 on the feed forward for either the pitch or the roll, this is gonna be indicating a problem. That's basically maxed out. So this could be a CG problem. So double check your CG or it could just be that you haven't got enough control surface movement. So you may want to just increase the amount of physical throw available. Anything below 200 is fine. But yeah, if you get to 255, you're maxed out. You need to look at, at what the cause of that problem is. Once you're happy with your auto-tune, you will disable your auto-tune mode. At that point, you don't have to land straight away, but just don't crash <laughs> um, because obviously you, you'll lose that nice tune. Um, but once you are happy, you can land and then the tune will need to be saved. Now, another question that keeps on getting popped up is does auto tune automatically save the tune? And the answer is no, it doesn't. Auto tune was deliberately made not to save the tune just in case you decide, well, actually, I'm not happy with this tune. Then you can land, pull out the battery, plug it back in and your tune is restored to what it was previously. 
So that was deliberately left out. There is a caveat though. If you have certain things enabled, so for example, you have continuous servo trim enabled or you have stats enabled, both of those cause a save when you disarm. Likewise, if you're using the old school uh, auto trim mode, again, when you disarm, that causes a save. So if the save command is called for any of those operations, it will also save the tune. So it depends on how you've got your model set up. But if you haven't got stats, continuous servo trim, and you haven't done an auto trim, you will need to save the auto tune when you land. So how do you do this? Well, there's a couple of ways. And uh, well, there's actually a third way plugging it into a computer, but we won't bother with that, it's a bit of a pain. So the first thing you do, obviously you're not in auto tune anymore. You've landed um, and disarm your aircraft. Now we can use stick commands to do a save. Now there's a simple one, which is down and out on both sticks, which will do the save. And the other option is to enter the OSD menu and trigger a save and reboot in there. So to get into the OSD menu, you yaw to the left and uh, push up with the pitch. That will enter the OSD menu, then use this stick to jog down to the option you want and then right to save and reboot. On the screen, I've put up uh, a stick commands guide. Uh, so the ones we want are either enter the OSD menu or save settings. I think I prefer actually going into the OSD menu because it's a bit more obvious that you've done it. But this, this site is useful for stick commands, especially if you're not mode two. Most of the, what you see is mode two, this one you can actually choose whichever mode you fly in and it will show you the correct stick commands. So I'll put a link to that in the video description. So there you go, once you've saved your auto tune, you're all good to go. Next flights will be much better. You'll have more control surface movement, though even on the bench, it may not look like it, it will be set up correctly now. So if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you click the subscribe and bell icon, that can help get this video out to more people so they can learn about this too. And if you thought it was really useful and someone has the question, also please feel free to share the video. At the end of the day, we're doing this to help people progress in the hobby. So any help they get will be brilliant. So thank you very much, guys. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them. <laughs>